If a crankbait's able to function by having up and down, oh God, what a good start to a video. If a crankbait works by having a lip off the front, buoyant on the top, heavy in the belly for stability, you got the stability. Why couldn't, you should be able to have a crankbait that sinks, lots of lead in the belly, still buoyant on the top, but the lip's on the top and it cranks up and sinks and cranks up. You guys know what I mean? Doesn't matter. We're gonna make that. I got plans. Took a little bit of a staycation, a little bit of time off, drew up some stuff. I got ideas. Out the yin yang right now. One day! Today's a one day. And we're doing an upside down crankbait. What I just tried to explain. Lip on the top, it sinks. I have faith. Pine. We want pine. Pine almost works for any bait. Well, pretty, pine works for any bait. You could say that. Um, you can't go wrong with pine when you're making a lure. I always grab a piece of the lip material I'm using and check the fit of the slot. Way too tight. Perfect. I think I am going to be going for something that's pretty thick, very plug-like, you know? Nothing really sleek and slender. I want the lip to be wide too, catch a lot of water, put a lot of weight in this belly. Have a lot of forces acting against each other to give this bait a good chance of having a good action, I think is what I'm trying to say. I really am making this just like a normal crankbait but there's gonna be way more weight in the belly and it's, I'm gonna get it to sink and the lip is upside down. Other than that, this is just like a normal crankbait. And me pointing that out does not help the view retention on this video. All right, time to carve. This is also one of my favorite woods to carve. I don't, I need to promote pine more. I have not been giving pine the love it deserves. This is that select pine from the hardwood store. Starts with an R. Rady, Ra, Radita, Radid, Radis. Select pine from the hardwood store. It's not like cedar. Not at all. It carves well. Delicious stuff. So the line tie is gonna go right off the tip of the nose, I'm thinking. I don't think it needs to go up or down or anything, just right off the tip. And I'm gonna use twist wires as the hardware on this bait. I'm already on the drum, oh. I didn't plug in my lead pot. So we gotta wait for that. With this bait, I could have plugged in my lead pot right when I started and it would be ready. Okay, big bit, half inch. We wanna put a lot of lead. Eh, half inch is pushing it. I think I have in-betweens. In 7 16th. I'll use a 7 16th inch bit, even though I hate these bits. They're all crooked. That one's all right. Right there is where the lead hole's gonna go. I don't know what's with these bits. They are just... Crappy. I think that should do it. That should get this bait to sink, but not sink like a rock, just sink, probably like at this rate. Did you guys catch that? This rate right here? And we can get some stability with this cranking action. I need to make a lip. That's way too big. I think that's big enough. Ten fifty-two. Today's a one day, and I didn't say the time right at the beginning. I'm getting a little, you know, after that vacation, I'm a little rusty, so cut me some slack. Wasn't really a vacation either. I just didn't make a video for a while. I don't know why I even call it that. 
That's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet, man. That lip has a taper on it to where it narrows. I'm looking forward to see how it works, as we all are, you know. Already got that lip glued in. And we're just waiting on this lead pot now. Not even close. Be another 10, 15 minutes. Suppose I could heart some comments, I guess. Might be some spiders over there too. It's Chelsea the gardener. <laughs> interrupting my video. I know. Not bad. I'm gluing in the twist wires right now. Already, while I wait for the lead pot. This one right here is right on the edge of that lead hole. So I definitely wanted to install that before I pour the lead so it can kind of get encased. And I just decided to install the rest of the twist wires too while I'm at it. Might as well. Doesn't really matter when you do it. How interesting is this? This, I really hope this works. I hope I got the lead far up enough this way and the bait's not just gonna want to like, just go to the surface and do nothing. Go to the surface and do, like, I hope it's gonna want to do this. Oh, lead's ready. It's dripping. Stop dripping. Lead's hot. I think that's enough. It's a lot of lead for a little bait. Sorry, I have it backwards. It's really hard to orient this bait correctly. After about a thousand crankbaits, you're used to it being the other way. Did I put this on the right side? Oh yeah. Dude, my mind is just, I keep going through baitception over here. I just need to remember that the lip is the other side. That's it, that's all that's going on. The lip is just on the top. Lead holes flush, everything's smooth. I've been sanding it for a little bit. On to sealing this wood with super glue. Wouldn't you know it? What do you need? Well, I was considering using the weed whacker, but then I took a look at it and it looks a little dangerous. You want me to fire it up? It's no big deal. The the thing, it constantly spins. It's not like the old one. On. It's constantly spinning, but I'll show you how to shut it off and stuff. One sec, I gotta teach Chelsea how to use a weed whacker. Okay. <laughs> just, it's always like this, but you just hold like that to shut this thing off. We're sealed, but I forgot to drill eye sockets. I didn't forget. Yeah, I've been drilling eye sockets after I seal the bait. Works better that way. Let's get some super glue on that, because that's exposed wood once again. And we're good. Whenever I decide to stop sanding is when we're good. I think I sand so much at this point because it is kind of important. If you want a smooth finish on your paint, or if you want your paint to be on a smooth surface, sand the crap out of your bait right now. Sometimes you need to keep sealing, like sand and add the super glue and sand and add super glue. Sand to your heart's content at this point. The upside down crankbait. Time to paint, starting with white. Okay, we got some white on it. What to paint this thing needs to be decided now. Around here, hard baits and crankbaits and moving baits like this, you want bright, bright. I'm gonna stray away from the ordinary, and I think I'm gonna paint a tiny little yellow bass. Lots of silver, lots of yellow, with the black stripes. I have a lot of time left today. I don't need to be in a hurry to go fishing, so. I think I'm gonna paint something fancy on this. A tiny little yellow bass. Just making sure that's what I wanna do. Yes. Gonna put some of this wicked fastback green on the flanks, the shoulders. I have multiple names for everything, so if you're confused by what I'm calling things, you have good reason to be. I need to make sure I'm well aware of what side is up and down, because this is going to confuse the heck out of me. Looks nothing like a yellow bass yet, but that color needs to be there, believe me. That color needs to be there. And now some yellow on the belly flank. And then the most artistic process of this build, I guess you'd call it. I've got to draw these stripes. When I do stuff like this, I usually use a bent wire. I don't use a brush. I don't have a reason why either. This is what I do. 
I'm just here to show you what I do, not give you good reasons. Yellow bass always have a break in their stripes somewhere around here on the bottom. Off the top of my head, I can't remember exactly what it looks like or exactly how I should break it, but I'm just going to break one of these lines. The next one I do, I'm just going to have a, a bit of a deviation in the pattern. Just like these. Come up right here. You, you know, that's good. How's that? One more line right at the bottom here, and that'll be good. And it won't go all the way back. There. Beautiful. Got to do that on the other side now. That's looking pretty sweet though. And if you guys don't want this to look like a child with ADHD did it, don't drink the quantities of coffee that I drink every morning. Your hands will be less shaky and you'll be more capable of doing this. Shout out to all my ADHD stricken homies. You're the only reason this world turns. Ooh, look at that spider. We got these weird corn spiders out here. They're very jumpy. Like they'll straight up jump on you, but they're harmless. Or is that a corn spider? There's not much left to do to this. We got this bait meshed up, nice and clamped. Mesh is clamped all over the bait. We're going to do a two color scale pattern. We're gonna go with silver first over the whole thing, and then a darker color. I have not decided what the darker color is gonna be, but let's get the silver on it. When you spray these scales, it is ideal to have the brush pulled back away from the bait, and you're putting a thin layer of whatever you're putting on over and over and over and over and building it up that way. If you put this needle right up to this bait and let loose, you'll pretty much be pushing wet paint under the mesh and it's gonna stick to the mesh and the bait when you pull it off. Just just try to keep it back. There's sometimes you can't because you're trying to get a detailed line of scales or something like that onto your bait, but then you, you need needle control and only put pull it back a little bit and only be spraying a little bit of paint. There's a lot of stuff with an airbrush. I should do a video on it eventually. A lot of stuff with an airbrush and bait making that you need to get skill for, skillful with eventually. A lot of touchy-feely stuff. You have to become one with the airbrush. I looked at some pictures of the yellow bass and you can see how the scales towards the top are very bright still. There's that blue, but then there's the white scale. I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it just like that. If I need to come back with another color towards the top flank, I will, but let's see what this looks like. I think once I cover the top in some black, it's gonna look good. Because I'm gonna come down pretty far with the black and cover up a lot of that blue. That'll look just fine and dandy. Beautiful bait. That's pretty much done. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to the belly, I think, but not much more than that. We'll be clear coating next. I meant adding eyes next. Okay, I got a couple of perfect little eyes for the job right here. Like they match this bait perfectly. There's like holographic blue. And then they're kind of goldish yellow. Little dab of glue. Stick these bad boys on. That is right up there with one of my favorite paint schemes. Like all the contrasting colors, the brightness, but the detail. It's almost, this paint scheme almost looks better when you don't add gills and stuff to the front too. Oh, it's getting close to seeing if this thing works. Time to clear coat. I'm actually kind of getting low on this stuff. The Alumalite UV. Which isn't good news because this stuff is 50 bucks a can or something like that. Okay, I gave that a solid half an hour and a lot of the clear coats dripped off and it's a really thin coat right now. So I'm gonna flash cure this coat really quick. And then I'm gonna give it another one. I just left it in there and twisted it around for like 30 seconds. Gonna let this drip for, I don't know, probably not as long. I don't care if this one's thicker. Just let it drip to where all the bubbles are gone and then put it in the tank. We'll give it a half hour and it'll be ready. Putting some stingers on this one too. It's like the only hook I use anymore. They're just so nice. We are ready to see if I am a bait making genius or I just have ideas that don't work once in a while. Let's go see. Well, folks, we are here. Starting the day off at a pond. And don't worry, this time I got my tripod set up to where that camera's not gonna fall off the roof of my car. Just starting at a pond, see if I can get some dumb bass to bite this. We might do some, might go to the river, might do some more pond hopping. We'll do plenty of fishing with this thing. Doesn't that just look strange? The lip on the top like that? I'm kind of scared. I, I really, really don't know what this is gonna do. It sinks. Oh, 
goodness gracious, did you see that? Look at it. Look at that. That's amazing. Whoa. Once it gets to the surface, it doesn't do anything. But as it makes its way to the surface, look at that. Goodness gracious, that has an amazing wobble. It's not balanced to the point where I can just reel it slowly and it wobbles. It comes up to the surface faster than you can reel it and it still wobbles, if that makes any sense. Watch. That is so good. Let's get a fish. I'm gonna go back to the car. I brought a saw and a file. I'm gonna try to shave this lip down a little bit and see if I can get a less of a rise from this bait so I can fish it a little faster. Okay, I have to be careful. There are hooks still attached to this bait, but I'm gonna saw this lip down a little bit, like such as right there. Need to do this on a movable surface. Then with the file, I'll just make sure that it's flat. I actually took a lot off. <laughs> that might have been a little bit of a mistake. We'll see. Maybe it's perfect. It was rising way too fast. All right, let's give that a shot. Yeah, that is a lot better actually. Real talk though, this bait isn't that fun to fish with. It's got like a horrible habit of just going to the surface super fast and you can't get much action going on in the water to entice a fish. It's just, it's kind of irritating to fish with. I'm not saying I'm not gonna fish with it, but we'll try to get a fish with this thing. But I don't know exactly what it is about this bait. It's just an ear. Sorry, my battery pack or my battery just shut off right there. But I was saying, I don't know what exactly it is about this bait. It is just a difficult bait to handle. Hopefully this is a better pond today. Ugh, I don't know. We might have to marlify this. It's been brutal. I don't know why fish don't like this bait. Might as well just see what happens if you do that. Rear treble on the line tie, line tie on the rear treble. Oh yeah, you mind? I don't know what this will do. Somebody's calling me, nobody I know. Sorry. Really? I marlified this, so I don't know. It has a tiny wobble to it. Okay, what I think I'm gonna do, just in order to catch a fish with this thing, because, good Lord, I cannot catch a fish with this thing, is take that lip completely off. There, that's taking it down as far as I can. I'm gonna put it back the, the right way. I'm gonna unmarlify it and then then we're gonna catch a fish. You watch. We've pretty much made this as close to a normal jerk bait as possible. Like the ones without a lip, you know. Dang it, it didn't cast off. <laughs> My clinch knots are just too good. Ooh. Felt like something way bigger. What is this? Crappie for day, whoa, that is a good crappie. It is official, fellas. Crappie, like standard jerk baits, this is no longer a crankbait with a lip on the top. 
This is just a standard jerk bait because I cut it down so much, but crappie like jerk baits. It's official. I am so happy I got a fish on this. I don't have to fish with that anymore. Thank the Lord. Challenge complete. Six, 21. That took a while. I'm so happy now. Challenge complete. Oh goodness, I am so happy I don't have to fish with that stupid thing anymore. <laughs> it's been like five hours. Fine, I'll keep fishing with it for the rest of the night. It just doesn't feel right to tie other stuff on during a video. Oh shoot, dang it, had one on. That would have been two on the really, really crappy bait. Really? Okay. If you cast close to the bank, you can see the water move from the bank where they're swimming out after it. All right. Oh, got one. Right on the end there. Second fish. Bass like standard jerk baits too. Well, lipless jerk baits. That feels better. Multiple fish. Thanks, Nick. What do you think? We're gonna pack it up soon. Need any work done to a pond? You need any fish stocked in any size? You need weed and algae identification and control? Do you need a dock made? Do you need the fish population balanced? Do you need a pond or even a lake audited with electro fishing? Just general pond maintenance, even feeders and feed, just everything to do with the pond. BJPond.com, go there, get what you need there. Please, go there, check it out. Kevin Bjornsson is the man you want to be talking to. Cause even on a difficult day like that, we were able to catch a crappie on a pretty sizable little plug. Like you usually don't see crappie biting that kind of stuff, but got her done. I don't know if it seemed like I was overreacting in the video or being weird or anything, but I was getting a little frustrated with the action of that bait. You could only have good action in short little like four foot increments, and then it has to stop and it would roll. It would come to the surface and do nothing. It's just fishing for five hours like that is kind of gets to you. We got it done. Success. I don't recommend making crankbaits with the lip on the top. I'm gonna be straight with you guys. Don't recommend that at all. Ah, oh, dang it. I just had an idea. Like if you made it a 90 degree lip that didn't really make it come up as bad. A 90 degree lip with the line tie closer to the lip. Yeah, that might work. That might be good. Might come back to this someday. That was a pretty big crappie though. Video's over. On to the next bait. On to the next bait. Wouldn't it be so cute if you could say that? I just picture it in my head and I know it's impossible, but. On to the next bait.